What's going on, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to episode two of season two here of Beacon. I'm joined here by these beauties to my uh, screen. We got Zach Benoit, our audio producer. You, 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 you. We've got Chris Lons, our cameraman, funny editor, and video producer. Yup, 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 yup. And I am, of course, Chris, aka Tripling Down Wayne Quiskey. Got a great <laughs> show for you today. We oh, got man. a huge preseason primer. Um, but before we start, uh, a little bit of sad news. Just want to kick it off with this right away. Uh, just wanted to send our condolences from the show to the entire Leafs organization and the family of Rodin Namorov. He passed away today at 21 years old. He was diagnosed with a brain tumor a little over two years ago after being drafted. And uh, really sad story. He seemed like a really good player and really good kid. So hopefully um, his family gets what they need this time. Yeah, on him. Heartbreaking. I know a lot of people, being like in Toronto, a lot of people are kind of uh, shooken up about it. A lot, very sad, and just gone, gone way too soon. You know, just unfor like unfortunate, but the brain tumor just gone way too soon. Yeah, we talk about the careers that we never, or the careers we wish we could have seen more of in like Lemieux and Crosby. Um, but you know, this is a career we never get to see, and that's a that's a shame all on its own. Certainly, certainly. So we do send our condolences from Beacon down to his family and of course the Leafs so um, there's no really easy way to pivot so we're just going to try to do our best here so welcome back to the show hopefully we can at least add some happiness during that kind of time today we got a great show planned I actually have paper notes today because my <laughs> laptop died so I have actual six pages of notes we're going Next, back to the <laughs> olden days I feel like Walter Cronkite <laughs> Chris um, about to hit the back in my day <laughs> We had the my projectors overall. with the translucent sheets. <laughs> Yo, those were those were goaded. I won't lie; those are those are pretty goaded. When back in school, when you had those, like when you knew, like sidebar, when you had, like yeah. when you saw the teacher roll that in on the unsturdiest cart of life, you knew it was gonna be a good the day. Unsturdiest cart of life. There was always one wheel that was loose and be like shaken as it's getting rolled in. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Oh yeah. I also remember when smart boards were so brand new, they were like, oh, yeah, we have to remember not to write on these like they're dry erase boards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember that, too. You know, uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, those are some fond memories. I The smart boards, I, there are people who still don't know how to use smart boards. It, it's still a work in progress for some people. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, after that detour. So, uh, yeah, we have our 32-team roundtable primer. The way it's going to work is we're going to talk about each team in alphabetical order. We're going to give a... X Factor player that kind of defines that team, and then we're going to give a analysis breakdown. And they're going to be Drafters, which is going to be a team that's rebuilding. Rafters, which is a team that could raise a championship banner to the Rafters. You see what they did there? So they're, they're the, the contenders, if you will. And then we have Lappers, um, just specifically the Philadelphia Flyer category. Um, <laughs> No, but it's just, a t it's just a team that doesn't really have an identity, what we call the mushy middle, somewhere you don't really want to be, so that is what we're looking at for that. we got some trivia at the end of the show, and that's our show for today with the primer, so get ready, lock in, we got 32 teams headed your way, and we're going to start, boys, with Anaheim, I'll kick us off, I guess. <laughs> so, my X-Factor player for Anaheim is John Gibson. Why? It's easy to say Trevor Zegers here, and I know what you're thinking, Trevor Zegers, right? But if, if Gibson can regain any semblance of his former self, where he was, you know, five, six years ago, the Ducks could, are already like a fringy team. He could really be a spark plug to that. He can also play himself into being a trade chip. The surprise third option that nobody wants to have happen is he doesn't play well, and suddenly he's no longer a trade chip, and he's just stuck there. So, and that's going to leave the Ducks in a really bad position. So I'm going to give them a ranking of drafter. I don't think they're quite there yet. Even with all those ifs and buts, candy and nuts, they're still going to be a draft team. Yeah. Yeah. I had Anaheim as a drafter as well. Um, I don't know too much about the West to be able to go off on it, but I do like having Gibson as an X factor. I agree. He's either going to play well and increase his trade value, or he's not going to play well, which only puts him in a better position for drafting. Yeah, I have them too in the drafter category. But my X Factor is actually going to be a little bit different. And it's a guy who, who he's very young on the team. 
and he started to come into his own last year. I um, He started off slow, picked it up as of late, and I think he's going to have a huge year on the back end. It's Jamie Drysdale. Oh, good one. I, I think I think he he has a good a good season. Takes another step forward. Only twenty one. That's that's something to look like. The Anaheim Ducks. They're still a very young team. Like you got Zegers, you got Terry, you got um, McTavish, who I'm gonna say is my sleeper for the Anaheim Ducks and someone you need to watch out for because McTavish, when he was here in the OHL playing for Hamilton, he was sensational. So, my X Factor is, Dr- is Jamie Drysdale, and the sleeper pick I'm going with is Mr. Mason McTavish. All right, moving on to Arizona. I've got Logan Cooley. The guy's an Uber prospect, supremely talented, and he's the future of this team. Now, I know recently the Arizona Coyotes called him the best prospect in the world. Don't know if I'd go that far, but I'll tell you this he's going to go from playing in a college arena to playing in the. Oh, another college arena. Um, <laughs> uh, all jokes aside, I think he's going to be a big part of the team this year, but it's not really going to matter. They don't really have a lot going on right now. So, in the words of T Swift, <laughs> they are drafters. Yeah, at Arizona, um, I actually had them as a laugher because. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just don't know what what good there is with this team. There's, there's nothing that has me cheering for them to rebuild either. You know, there are players that really don't seem to want to play in Arizona. Um, there are ones that could be good. Um, you know, if Zucker's last year in Pittsburgh is any indication, you know, I don't think he really wanted to go play with a team that is going to be awful. But at the same point, what? what have they really had to to be excited for? You know, as somebody that is mainly in the Eastern Conference, I, I don't hear anything about Arizona other than, you know, it's a tiny stadium and they're kind of a team stuck in the middle of nowhere. So I had them as a laugher. Um, and I don't, like I said, I don't really have an X factor for them. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of with Chris here with the laugher. Uh, I, I think they're trending in the right direction. Do I think they're drafters yet? No. I I don't love some of the additions that they got in the offseason. Like, I understand bringing in Zucker, Voracek for, that, say, that veteran presence in the locker room because this is a very young team. You know, you also have Andrew Ladd in there. But this team is still, like, they're still, I think they're the Arizona Coyotes two years, like, two years away from being with the, uh, or sorry, not the Coyotes. They're the Anaheim Ducks two years away, like, from where the Anaheim Ducks are right now. Uh, they have Clayton Keller, who I think is their X Factor player. He, if he is on his game and he stays healthy, he is a very, very good player. Twenty five years old, I really love him. I, I love the Cooley pick. He was gonna like. I agree, he's the future of the team. Um, and just my sleepers, honestly, is just the the goaltending. They have a, a very young goaltending duo in Connor Ingram and I'm gonna butcher this name, Ivan Pros. Prosvetov, Prosvetov. I think it's Provetsov. Provetsov. Either way, I butchered his name. He's a young goalie, good goalie. I think these guys are going to be the sleepers if they can come into the league and perform. I think Arizona can, you know, steal some games away down the stretch when they're like from teams in the playoffs or in the battle for uh, the playoff race. Connor Ingram, when he was playing in the World Juniors, he was like the best goalie. We've seen in a long time uh, for Team Canada. So if he can go back to that kind of framework, I think you know that those are your sleepers for Arizona. What happened to Vimelka? I must have missed that. He's still there. Is he still? I think okay. he's a third string. Or there's Vimelka. Yeah, Corral Vimelka. Yeah, he's, he's, there, he's there. He's there. Yeah, he's still he's there. He's still okay. there. Okay. <laughs> I didn't hear his name. I was like, "Whoa, wait, what?" I was gonna say. Sorry, I have I I have them. They have they have them listed. I guess just by last name, and he's yeah. listed third. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of players that I was talking about on Arizona, where it's like I feel like they should be playing for a better team. Vimelk is one that he did so well. I feel like he should be playing for a better team that wants to do something. All right. Moving on to Boston, I've got um, my first of many cheater picks. This this segment. I've got Jeremy Swayman in the Linus Olmark tandem. Bruins mm. took a huge hit losing Bergeron and Krejci. Uh, it's not insurmountable if Olmark 
and so I make it pull their own weight and come up with about what I have here, about 75% replicated of last season. Um, what, the big if and the caveat here is if they can do that. I'm not a huge believer. The body of work for both of them is murky at best. I actually have Boston as a drafter. I just don't think they're going to overcome that gaping hole down the middle that Bergeron left plus Krejci. I, I like Jeremy Swayman a lot. Linus Olmark, I don't I just can't see him replicating that season again. It's up to them to prove me wrong. Yeah. I had him as a drafter as well, if that helps you feel any better. Okay. Because, I mean, I think they're going to need a year or two to work themselves out of the cap hell they made for themselves last year. Um, And, yeah, my X factors are Coyle and Zaka. Because it's like, all right, one of you has to step up. So I'm, somebody's got to be that first center. And you're going to have to work for it. But yeah, you know, Boston, you don't have a seven or 16 year streak to worry about breaking. So take a year or two, figure it out, get some good draft picks, have a soft, short rebuild. Um, you know, you'll, I'm sure you'll be back to winning more championships later. Yeah, I also have them as drafters right now. I think the clear cut X factor of this team is Pasternak, but for just for the, the purposes of what we're doing right now. Honestly, I'm in the same boat with you. Pavel Zaka is gonna is for me gonna be the X factor if he can step up and be like a sliver of what Bergeron has been for the Boston Bruins. That is already huge. Twenty like he's still super young. Another guy who um I think is gonna be an X factor that's not named Pasternak, Charlie McAvoy. That like that's his blue line now. Like he is he is the guy on the blue line. He needs to basically just command everything and then finally the quick little sleeper i have is morgan geeky uh yeah if if he can if he can step up you know start playing heavier minutes get his footing set in the nhl i don't mind him being a, a a second line center maybe third line yeah that's when i was looking over their roster i kind of saw him as more of a bottom six center yeah I'm surprised you sold them all as drafters. I really thought it was going to be in the, uh, the the loan category. It's, it's there. tough, you know. Like they in one summer they went from a a very big playoff team to losing basically almost a whole playoff roster. It's kind of yeah. like how you never doubt the Penguins' core. I, I'm scared to you know go on camera and say that Boston's going to be a laugher. <laughs> I'd be more. Don't take that out of context. Yeah. Bergeron was there. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, obviously really? having Bergeron is scary, but you still have Martian, Coil. Um, pasta, pasta, pasta. Zaka, Hell, who pasta could step up? Like, again. yeah, man. <laughs> it's it's one of those teams that's going to be very sneaky. Moving right along, heading to uh, Buffalo, we got Devin Levi. Um, it's pretty rare that a goalie as precocious as Levi, with as few games under his belt that he has currently, is going to be basically in line to start next season. But that is how it stands right now. He just needs to get the Sabers a little bit above passable goaltending, and I think they'll be good. If he could play somewhere around what Craig Anderson did last season, I think they'll be fine. I'm a big believer in this guy. I think he's going to be one of the best goalies in the NHL in a couple of years. So, right now, I actually have Buffalo as a rafter team. I think they're going to make the playoffs and make some noise. Um, I got to scroll back up in my notes. Yeah, I, I promise I didn't copy you. But I do also have Buffalo as a rafter. I mean, I thought they were they weren't far behind us in the playoff race this past year. It wasn't so close that we were sweating it. Um, but they weren't far behind. My X factor for them is Dylan Cousins cuz he's still young. He can go off and either uh serve some depth at 2C or finish on the top line. You know, if he gets it under his belt, he's going to be versatile and you know, gives them a a double-headed threat similar to what Pittsburgh and Edmonton have had. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you guys. I I've been on the Buffalo fan fan bus for probably a year now. Uh, I think their core four of what they have in Cousins, Thompson, um, Darlin, and Power, those four I think are going to be a a threat for years to come, especially with how young they are. The goaltending situation there, I love it a lot. You have a lot of young goaltenders. Look at my guy. You can never pronounce his name. Uka Pekka Lekinen. My guy, Luke. that's my guy. One day. one day, yeah, one day I'll get his. I'm gonna get his jersey one day. 
Um, <laughs> my sleeper though, and a guy I really want, I really want to have a good year is Jack Quinn. I think uh, him on Buffalo, like T- he was on 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 a line with Tage Thompson, and they were cooking last year. So yeah, my, if they can cook only, again, sorry about that. My only other note for Buffalo was I didn't realize how old Jeff Skinner was <laughs> and how long his contract was. Oh yeah, he's he's uh he's got a full no move clause until twenty seven twenty eight when he'll be thirty five. Yeah, like that's oh that's looking rough. It's okay. They got a lot of other younger guys they can focus on for now. <laughs> All right, moving right along here, we've got. Calgary. Um, and in my notes here, I've specified this is one of my first darts, darts at the wall. So I've got Dustin Wolf as the X Factor. See kind of the above with Devin Levi. Uh, Dustin Wolf is a really good young talent. And there will be two scenarios for the Flames that they need to watch out for. I truly believe Wolf is going to supplant Mark Sherm as the number one goalie this year. With the exception of injury, there are two reasons that could happen. Number one, Wolf played so well that he just usurped him. That's the Flames need to hope for. The other option is that Markstrom played badly again, and Wolf is average at best. They, they need to hope for not that, because that would be a very bad outcome that would not lead the playoffs. So I've got Dustin Wolf as my X Factor. I do have Calgary in the mushy middle. I have them as lappers. I don't know. I really don't know what they are. They've got a good enough roster. Coaching, we'll see. I just, I don't know. It's really going to be up to goaltending again, and that's never a good gamble to take. Yeah, they're a laugher for me as well. Um, my apologies to Canada. Almost half of your teams are laughers in my book. Um, but I think there's another one that will be well justified. Um, but yeah, for me, they're laughers because they uh, they almost fell ass first into a playoff spot, and they were doing terribly. Like, how... How do you sit back and cheer for a team like that? And, you know, you're, um, again, talking about X Factors, I don't have one specifically laid out, um, but the one that comes right to the top of my head is uh, Jonathan Huberto. Um, You know, get back to what you had in Florida, and I think you'll help the Flames out. Maybe actually you will get them into a wild card spot, but at the same time, how many players didn't want to play again in Calgary? You know, you've got a locker room that you got to get back on board with wanting to play hockey for you. Um, and Markstrom has to play better. Um, I think it was another SDP thing where they talked about there were 19 one-goal games uh, for Calgary. And I could be off on the exact number, but it was an astronomical amount of one-goal games. Um, and they talked about how many times he was featured in Dang It's. And it's like that, that could be the goal that makes... Uh, that makes or breaks that game, makes or breaks your season. So, yeah, just Markstrom's got to play smarter, and that top six has to get back to loving to play hockey. Yeah, I have them as laughers as well. I think the issue for them is – or, sorry, the X factor for them, uh, Elias Lindholm. You know, he had the insane 2021-2022 year – and everybody at the start of last year thought, you know, this guy's going to jump and be a number one center. Well, he didn't. He fell back. And I don't think, like, no disrespect, but Mikhail Backlund, I don't think he's a number one center on this team. Blake Coleman, I don't think he's a number one center on this team. Nassim Kadri, definitely don't think he's a number one center on this team. What? I don't think really? he's number one. I think he's, a number, I think he's best suited as a number two. I don't think he's, he's best suited as a number one. Yeah. That's my okay. only thing. Kadri's 32. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. I love Nazem. But I we, think I think he's we best. We talk about this like we don't have a 36-year-old. First exactly. Time. exactly. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but clearly different talent. But, yeah, again, I just think I think if Elias Lindholm performed last year, this team's a lot different. Like, he's a big X factor on this team. He was really, really good for them in that 2021-22 year. And then last year it was just he was just gone. I don't know what happened if he just couldn't get uh, chemistry with Huberto or whatnot. But those like he's the X factor of this team. The sleepers I have for them is Rasmus Anderson, and then I think it's uh, uh, Olivier Oliver or Olivier Clingington. I love okay. I love those two on We're- defense. Oh, Kylington. 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 Thank you. No, it's it's actually not Kylington. 
Well, do you know how you say that name? How do you say it, Chris? Because I, <laughs> I know you Oliver, know. It's Oliver Shillington. Shillington? Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Well, anyway, I th- I think him and Anderson together on that on that blue line, I really like it. They also have Noah Hannafin, who's a, who's just a sneaky good oh, defensive yeah. guy. But um, those two, I love it a lot. But I also do agree with your points about their goaltending. Yeah. All right, cool. I'm still a little bummed we didn't pick up Hannafin, but hopefully Graves works out. Oh, he will, of course. Keeping the train rolling here. We got Carolina, and for my X Factor, I have the entire blue line. Uh, just reading this off my list here. They have a solid pipeline of forwards, prospects, goaltending, ass- sure. Uh, injuries yeah. be damned, of course, because let's look at their goaltending. Uh, but the, the major litmus test this year is going to come down to the blue line. Can the Hurricanes score enough goals and then prevent enough to mitigate the complete black hole of defense that is Tony D'Angelo and Brent Burns. That is the question. (laughs) And I, of course, have them as a Raptor team, but man, it's going to be tough to be a Hurricanes fan. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're Raptors in my book as well, just because they've they've been in that conversation the last couple years, um, and they've still got, I think they've still got a big core of that group that wants to send something up into the Raptors. Uh, my X factor is Michael Bunting, um, because he's he's gonna complement their style well. He hits hard um, and is capable of finishing. I forget what his total points were when he was playing on Matthew's wing, but it was it was respectable. So if he can get in there um, and help a line that's maybe having trouble, because I think he can play anywhere in the lineup. I think he's been inserted just about anywhere. But he gets in, he helps them finish. Um, that's another dangerous line that does help score the goals to replace that defensive black hole. I didn't realize it was D'Angelo and Burns. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be tough. That's going to be a real tough one. Yeah, so my X Factor, I actually kind of have two for this team. One might be a little bit obvious, but Andre Shvetsnikov, I want to see how he comes back from injury. Because, again, that Carolina team, they played the they played the latter half of that season without Shvetsnikov. So... You know, inserting him into a lineup is pretty big. Another yeah. guy I want to see, I want to see perform is Martin Nikas. If he can step up again like he did last year, this t- the forward. I think I agree with Chris. It's a solid forward group. That defense will come into question once again. Um, I'm in the rafters with them, and then my my sneaky pick is one of their goaltenders. Again, can't pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try to. It's not Ranta. It's not Freddie Anderson. It's the third uh, one. Pooch. <laughs> is it Kuchetkov? Kuchetkov? Yeah, hey, Piotr Piotr Kuchetkov. Dude, I, I, I picked him up for a week and a half last year, and he performed. So, if yeah. he can perform again this year, step up, hot take, goalie number one on that team. Speaking of fantasy, I'm pretty sure it was Chris that uh, set up a trade where I received Martin Nietzsche last year at some point. I forget who you got back for him, but that was that was a good it worked out well for me. It worked out well for me because I have back-to-back championships. Yeah. Um, and I moved right. up in the rankings, so. Going to keep on moving here. Got the Chicago Blackhawks, and I actually have the entire Hawks front office. Yes, you probably thought I'd say Connor Bedard here. Let me tell you why I did not say Connor Bedard. He's in a pressure-free environment. He's Connor Bedard. He's got no expectations other than to just be himself. If he can score goals and put up points, he has the about playing defense. He doesn't worry about winning faceoffs. He's just got to be himself. What's going to matter is if um, Kyle Davidson could surround him with the talent moving forward or even at the trade deadline to give him a line of some kind alongside Taylor Hall. And then if Luke Richardson can extract enough out of the rest of the roster to make his first rookie season memorable for the right reasons and not the wrong ones. I have them as drafters, very obviously, for a while. But at least they're not in that mushy middle. Sorry, I had to take a quick look um, because it doesn't look like they have Sam Lafferty anymore. So there goes my X Factor because I love Lafferty. Um, I had Chicago as a laugher. Or no, 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 no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to the city of Chicago. Uh, send me a hot dog the next time you feel like it. Or a deep they are a drafter in my book. I mean, you, know, you just got rid of, rid of Taves and Kane. Again, like Boston, take a couple years, 
you can get back to winning like dynasties again. You know, it won't take you too long because the NF, uh, NHL loves you, but you'll get there. Yeah, I I have them as drafters as well. My X factor is honestly just the whole organization as a whole. This is a new era for the city of Chicago, for the organization of the Blackhawks, and just, just on again, just hockey in Chicago as a, in general. It's just a new era. You have the best prospect we've seen since McDavid come in in Connor Bedard. You know, you have you've had all the the allegations and all the reports come out of stuff or in the early 2010s. You know what? All those players are gone now. You know, it's a com- all the players are gone. All the front office is gone. It's a completely new bunch. How does this organization move forward this season to one like Chris said, making this first season memorable for Bedard, but also making this team, you know, just just have a different image than what it's had for the past ten years. I think that's the number yeah. one thing with the organization. So if Chicago can kind of move forward from that, I think the organization is just the biggest X factor for them. Yeah, and this is not the uh, environment that I'm going to make light of Rocky Wirtz. Um, but at the same time, you're going to have a new chairman. Um, I Last I recall, I think it was Danny Wirtz was going to step up and take over that. So you've got somebody new at the helm at the very top of your organization. This this could be a good time to come on as a Blackhawks fan if you're looking to get into hockey in Chicago. Exactly, 100% agree. This is this could be the new chapter, like the start of a new chapter for hockey in Chicago as a whole. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so moving right along, I've got Colorado up next. For me, their X factor is going to be health. If the Avs are healthy, they're one of the best teams in the league, hands down. That's a given. Again. The asterisk, asterisk is on the if. They're going to be missing Landis Gog. He might not come back. Mm. Right and then basically willed this team to playoffs last season. But this is a team that's... It's, 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 they're, they can just avoid a dramatic injury to their entire roster like they had this past season. They're going to be probably at least a conference final team. They just need to stay healthy. I, I think it goes without saying... They're a rafter team for me, but they, they just need to stay on the ice. So I put them as a laugher <laughs> just to get Adam in range. No, they were actually, they were a rafter for me. Um, again, they just won the cup two years ago. It's hard to look at them and say, yeah, you're a drafter or a rafter or a, a laugher. No, you're, you're definitely a, a rafter team. Um, but I completely agree. It's gotta be health. Um, you know, when you said Ranton and willed him to a playoff spot, I'm sitting there going, well, what about McKinnon? And I remembered, oh, yeah, he was also injured. <laughs> and then I remember sitting there uh, on my way to work in, like, February, and, you know, I'm listening to some some hockey broadcast, and they go over the uh, starting lines for Colorado that night, and it's like, what, like, five AH, or four AHLers, Erod and Ranton? And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> Don't know how they're winning games. <laughs> Yeah, so, hold on, let me ask Adam. Hey, Adam, what do you think about Colorado? Got it. So, so, so he said health is what, yeah, so Adam's actually over here, you know, off camera, feeding me the Colorado facts. Uh, no, I agree, health is probably going to be the number one X factor. Uh, just so I can be different, I'll say a player. Bo Byram, you know, X factor on the blue line. Step up, you have Kale McCarr there, we all know he's going to be you know, Kale McCarr, you know, shout out to the 2024 um, NHL 24 uh, cover athlete right there, Kale McCarr. But Bo Byram, if he can take a step up, I think that blue line just gets even deeper than it already is. And obviously, yeah, just stay healthy. No, you know who my X Factor is now? Jack Johnson, the better Johnson. <laughs> I still can't believe he's still playing. I, I wonder, <laughs> like... Truthfully, and then he stayed over Eric. <laughs> I wonder how Jack Johnson is doing today. I really, I really do. I hope he's having. A, I hope he went like fishing, or he went, you know, yeah. golfing, or whatever makes Jack Johnson. I hope he had a really good day. In his lane, hydrated. Exactly, and this is where Chris is going to insert some sappy music, <laughs> you know, like a like the the Mr. Krabs violin, you know, or something. <laughs> Every time I see Mr. Krabs, this is just an aside. I always think about the like the videos of the crabs on TikTok that are getting like 
taking apart things. Oh my god, money, money, <laughs> money. <laughs> so messed um, up. <laughs> sorry about that for all our audio listeners. I'm moving real along. I've got Columbus here. Now, I'm just going to kind of read this verbatim from my notes. The Michigan boys, they are my X Factor. So, they just added Adam Fantilli. And if you didn't know, here is a list of who they also have from Michigan in just the past few years. They've got Ken Johnson, they've got Zach Wierenski, and they've got Nick Blankenberg. And actually, Adam Fantilli's line mate, I forget his name, is going to be going back to college, but he'll also be there. So, they have five Michigan Wolverines on their active roster right now. If they're going to go anywhere under Mike Babcock, it's going to be guys because of the guys in blue and gold who get the blue jackets going. I actually, I kind of was on the fence with them. I don't know if they're a, a, a drafter or a drafter, so I'm with Laffer because I really don't know what they are. No, don't feel bad. I also called him a Laffer just because, I don't know, man. Columbus is starting to become that team that whenever Pittsburgh plays them, I'm like, all right, I can take a night off. Uh, and apparently so did Pittsburgh the last night of the season. But uh, my X factors for them were uh, some of their stars, uh, Line A, Gaudreau. Um, I know Provorov kind of sees himself as a star. Show up and play like stars, you know? Get your team out there, motivate them, get them winning games. Um Another X factor is going to be Babcock. I'm I'm interested to see what Babcock's going to do coming back into the league with a team like this. You're not going to have a team like Toronto where you had, you know, just excess of natural talent. You're going to have to kind of stick your hands in the mud and get dirty and work them, uh, and not uh, mentally abuse them along the way. <laughs> um, and of course, shout out to my favorite thing in Columbus, the cannon. But otherwise. It's war on Ohio time. War on Ohio. <laughs> uh, All righty. My X Factor. I, I So I'm, I have one obvious, but I have a sneak one as well. So I'll do the obvious one first. Johnny Goudreau, you got paid. You got the bag. You went to Columbus. Show me why you got the bag. You know, he did it the yeah. year before. Underperformed last year. I get there was injuries to Line. You didn't have another big guy with you. You know what? Now it's not. Now it's it, the one year's done. No more excuses. You're Johnny Hockey. I I want to see you perform. I want to see you play well. Like play well. The secret guy I have is Alexander uh, Texier. Tex. How do you pronounce it, Chris? You know it. I think I've heard it pronounced Americanized and French. I've heard Texier and uh, to share. So I'm not sure which one it is. I've so, heard Texier. So. <laughs> all right. So whatever it is, he I respect you. You're a good hockey player. You're my sneak X factor player for this team. You know, Fantelli. We all know what he's gonna bring. He's he's a stud. He would have been number one in any other draft year that did not have Connor Bedard. Texier, you can easily easily be uh, center uh, the second line center. All right. So, for Dallas, um, I, I know what we're all thinking. I'm just going to say the obvious out here. My ex doctor Scott Wedgwood. Now, if you just let out a collective gasp to my pick of Scott Wedgwood, let me just let me, let me paint you a picture here. Think about Dallas last season. Think about how in the playoffs they fizzled because of goaltending struggling and how Ottinger struggled down the stretch. If they can just get five to six more quality games out of Scott Wedgwood, who is the backup right now, and just going to be fresher. They're not going to have to work him as much, and he won't be coming into games late. So if he can just get a couple more games this season, Scott Wedgwood is their X Factor. And I obviously have them as a roster team. Yeah, they are my... Uh, they are my second of three rafter teams from the West. Uh, sorry, from the uh, Central. And, you know, I, I really wish... They uh, could have gone on last year. I would have loved to see them keep going and win it. Um, of course, I love Ottinger. Um, but uh, the player that I am going to be most interested in watching is Miro Haskinen this coming season. But, yeah, Dallas, I think you got a lot to look forward to this year. So I had to do a double take because I looked at the goaltenders and it said Matt Murray. And I was like, where transaction (laughs) did I miss? Let me tell you, slight panic attack. Anyway, (laughs) 
Uh, X Factor player Justin Robertson, or Jason Robertson. I don't want to say Justin. Mm-hmm. Jason Robertson. Uh, you know he had the coming out party last year. Would not surprise me if he continued it this year. He's basically the heart and soul of this team. Uh, the sneaky player that I love and that I actually had a class with in high school, Mr. Thomas Harley on defense. I yo this first off, if Thomas if Mr. Harley ever hears this, Thomas, it was fun having you in that sociology class. You were a really cool dude. Uh, second off, uh, he's just a really good hockey player. <laughs> like, he played for the OHL Steelheads. I got to see him a lot up up close and personal when I worked there. And, you know, he's just such a sneaky, like he's a sneaky, good defenseman, a great two way defenseman. He can, he can project like propel offense and piggyback a power play really, really well, but he can also be a stay at home defenseman and, and actually defend. So 21 years old, I think he has a lot of potential coming up in the league. I have them right now as drafters or eh, I guess, I guess I would put like fringe rafter, like that drafter to rafter range right now, you know, because I feel like they could steal, they can like get into the playoffs and make some, do some damage. But at the same time, I think they might be a piece away. Yeah, I, no, I've got teams that are in that high drafters. I know what you're talking about, where they're not, yeah. they're not a laugher. They're they need to be taken seriously, but they're not quite there. I f- yeah, fully teams. thought last year Dallas was was going to win the cup on the back of Ottinger, mm-hmm. but. You know, seeing the team that like seeing that team kind of collapse a little bit in the playoffs makes me think you know they're one piece away from being a significant impact team in this league. And that piece's name is William Nylander, who they can only get if they take on Matt Murray, the other, <laughs> the other, Matt, the reunite other Matt the Mats. <laughs> All right, moving on to Detroit. So I've got the juniors. Uh, a.k.a. Mo Sider and uh, Lucas Raymond coming into their junior seasons. You know, they had a great rookie year, had a bit of a sophomore slump. Let's see what they can do this year. Uh, really, for the Iser plan to go to full effect, it's going to require them to hit somewhere close to their rookie season. We know that Lucas Raymond is the elite passer. He struggled to, tr- to play drive truly last season. Mo Sider is a great defender. He struggled to make anything happen offensively last season. So if Detroit's going to do anything of significance, it's going to be on the back of those two. And just for posterity, I do have Detroit as a laugher because they're in the mushy middle. The caveat is that they're sort of there by design. So it's they're, they're one of the only teams I have on here that is okay to be there because they, they've kind of chosen to be there. So that's where I have them. I think... I think when we uh, when you first talked about laughers to us, I took it as a a point and laugh category. <laughs> um, but I think just launch. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Columbus. <laughs> um, that's what I took it as. But I think another good way to look at it is if you're a fan, you kind of sit there and you're just like, <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> well, this is pain. <laughs> Why is this team losing? Um, but I um, I actually do have them listed as a rafter because I think they see themselves as a rafter. Uh, I think they see themselves as a team that's going to make a push for the playoffs and then somehow, you know, find a way to do it because 16 teams go in and one team can come out and sometimes it's your team. Uh, but my X factor for them is Vili Huso. Um, I think he's really going to need to step up as a goaltender because have you guys seen who the second goaltender signed is? I'm James worried. Reimer. Oh, Yikes. oh, baby. Yeah, you're gonna. He's gonna need to play a lot of games. So I really like that Huso pick. I'm very high on him, but I think the clear X factor for this team, for, in my eyes anyway, is going to be Debrinkat. Mm. You so have. Go, that's- I thought about that one. Yeah, so, like, the only reasoning being, you have the Debrinkat that played with Chicago. This team is in. This team is great. You have a solid first line. You put Lucas Raymond, Debrinkat, and honestly, who would I play center? Hmm, Dylan Larkin. That's a great first line. And then you have Mason Ra- uh, Rasmussen playing second line or whoever playing second line. Like, this team has a lot of good young talent. I would honestly put them in that fringe of drafter to rafter. Because I think if they get hot, they're going 
they can make it to the playoffs, and I think they 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 can have a decent run. Comper I th- was a really good pick for the middle six. I think that that'll go severely underrated. De- uh, Perron I really like in the bottom six. I love his game. I will always love his game. And then you have the flyer of Dylan Sprong. Will he perform? Will he not? Who knows? He was once a top prospect. All righty. Right. Moving on from Detroit. We've got Edmonton. Now, before I hit Edmonton, did we decide if we're doing the full 32 today or are we doing 16? We could do 16 and then leave the other 16 for when Adam comes back. I, I like that idea. Okay. So, oh, yeah, Edmonton. Yeah. So, what are we? So, how, I'm many, say, yeah, okay, how many do we have left? Can you insert some cool jazz music while I count? All right, moving right um, along. So we're going to be on Edmonton, right? Yep. Yeah, Edmonton. All right. For the users, for the listeners at home, that was a short little break. Welcome back. So Edmonton, we've got for my own pick. I have goaltending. So I'm not going to waste your precious time or your ears, talking about Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Instead, I'm going to talk about what the real issue is, which is the fact that they could not stop a puck. If they can get anything, and I legitimately mean anything, out of Jack Campbell this season that is better than last year, and they can get an adequate season from Stu Skinner, they're going to be just fine. But again, it's going to come down to, is Jack Campbell the Toronto Jack Campbell? Or is he the Jack Campbell that bounced around between Dallas and L.A. for the first five, six years of his career. We'll see. I obviously have them as a rafter team. They could be much higher if their goaltending is good. Yeah, they're listed as a rafter in my book because, again, you just went to the conference final two years ago. Um, you made it in. You made it past the division or uh, the wild card round last year. Um, this team has everything in front that it needs to win. You've got amazing players in McDavid and Dreisaitl who are just, you know, filling up walls with trophies at home. Why haven't they won a Stanley Cup yet? Because you can't get a combination of good defense and good goaltending in the same year. So, one of those one of those has to step up. Um, yeah, uh, Stuart Skinner was good for me in fantasy. Um, <laughs> Jack Campbell for like the week or two that I might have had him, not so much. Um, But, yeah, step up your goaltending, step up your defense. It doesn't have to be huge leaps and bounds either. It's small, small steps. But if you do it, you're going to be better off, and maybe you'll finally win a Stanley Cup for Canada. How dare you guys not mention the great Calvin Pickard, all right? (laughs) He's coming to the squad. He's saving the day. This Edmonton team is a rafter team. You have McDavid, you have Dreisaitl, you have Nugent Hopkins, you have Ryan McLeod, you have Evan Bouchard, you have Darnell Nurse. Calvin Pickard is the guy that brings them all together. Their goaltending is the X factor. Put them on the rafters and let's get going. I respect it. I respect it. Also, Calvin Pickard. Shout out Calvin Pickard. Colorado Avalanche and Toronto Maple Leafs legend, by the way. (laughs) Moving right along, uh, on Florida, I've got Sergey Bobrovsky. Now, the Cat Cinderella story did end without a glass slipper. Is it glass or crystal? Glass. Uh, I believe it was glass. glass slipper. Let me just edit up my notes. Um, but they have all the pieces there to potentially make a run again. That being said, are we going to get the Bobrovsky, who started the season off and basically ended as a third-string goalie behind Alex Lyon? Or we're going to get the Bobrovsky, who is going to be the uh, Conn Smythe winner at the end of the playoffs. Somewhere in the middle is fine, too. Right now, I'm not sure. And I don't honestly know if it matters, because I had them as laughers, and I'll tell you why. They barely squeaked in playing the style of play of hockey they did, and that's what they're going to do this season. They're going to play the same style of hockey. Playing that style of hockey almost missed the playoffs. They, they, they made it because the Penguins were awful at the end of the season. Now the Atlantic got tougher, and so did the Metro. I don't think it's going to happen again. I I think they're going to miss, and now they're firmly in the mushy middle of their almost contenders, but not quite. Yeah, I had them as a rafter, but I you've convinced me to switch them back over to a laugher because it, I 
you nailed it. I'm not going to repeat what you said word for word. You nailed it. They fell in because Pittsburgh, or they, yeah, they fell in because Pittsburgh fell out. So you're you're welcome, by the way. Congratulations on that Stanley Cup appearance, because we couldn't beat fucking bottom of the league Chicago or Columbus yeah. or oh Columbus. My, bottom of the league Columbus. <laughs> I don't think that gets talked about enough. Both it really teams were doesn't. bottom of the league when we lost to them. It really yeah, doesn't. you tell them, Chris. <laughs> yeah, take that, all three Florida Panthers fans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I So I'm uh, going to go a little – oh, sorry, you keep going, Chris? Uh, the only thing I had left was my X factor. Um, my X factor is the right defense. Uh, one of them is the right defense because they only have two right uh, defensemen signed, and it's Kulikov and Mahura. Oh. So oh. They, oh. I think they're going to be looking to get deeper on the right side. Uh-oh. You can't get lucky. Yeah, really. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, uh, the oh, second oh, one was oh. Erod. Erod's going to go Sorry, off. Adam. He's going to become a top Wait. six player. Thank God Adam's not here. Sorry, Adam, what'd you I'm, say? I'm here in Adam? spirit. <laughs> yeah. You want me to tell Chris that? Can I say that on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, we're after the first minute. I can't, I, can't say, I can't say that on the podcast, but Adam has had some choice words. Started with poopy and ended with head. Wow. Yeah. What did he call me the one time? A, a, bad a bum host. host and a bum opinion. <laughs> a bum host and a bum opinion. A I bum want host my, and a my bum opinion. I want bum host, bum opinion. That needs to, that needs to go on your resume. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got, Rick Back? What, what do I got? So, I'm actually going to go a little different from the pack here. Uh, I have them as drafters, but very fringe, and I mean fringe. They're in the mushy mi- middle, like you said, so that's why they're very fringe rafters. And my point being, X Factor Spencer Knight goaltending. This team is loaded with offense. You have Matthew Kachuk. You have Barkov. You have Verhage, so on and so forth. Brandon Montour on the on the blue line. Bobrovsky, as magical as what he did in the playoffs, that's he could he's not re- repeating that. The guy it's listed here as 182 pounds. I'm pretty sure he's 97 pounds. <laughs> so, like, if Spencer Knight can stay healthy, he was a top prospect goalie. He was he is so good, man. He is so good and so young. If he can stay healthy, this Cats team has a great goalie in the behind them. And I think that's what missed them, like, and that's why they sucked so much last year, is because Bobrovsky underperformed and then got hot at the right time while Spencer Knight was injured all season long. If Spencer Knight's healthy all season long, I think that's a very different Cats team. So that's why I have them as drafters in, in very, very fringe rafters. And then, again, I think the X, the X factor has to be, or like I said, has to be Spencer Knight. Like, is, if he performs, this Cats team is so much different. A Knight Lion Bob uh, goalie trio would make me comfortable as a fan. Exactly. As long as Bob is your third. Um, but yeah, when you were saying about what Bob are we going to get, are we going to get, I was thinking, yeah, are we going to get Eastern Conference uh, final Bob? Or are we going to get last game of the Stanley Cup Bob, where I was joking about it's a shame they didn't score 10 goals to make it one for every million? <laughs> you know? You know, you said that, and honestly, I thought you were making a joke about the. Panthers being called the Cats because you said Lion and Bob. I thought like a Bobcat. My <laughs> brain just shut off for a split minute there. I disassociated. Sorry about that, fans. <laughs> Lion Cat, Bobcat, Night Cat. I thought you were going to make some joke like uh, Night Rider or something <laughs> when you said Night I was, my, I, The gears were turning. It's not the middle yeah, of the I was, I was uh, waiting for uh, it to happen. Chat Noir. Right, so there we go. Our final three teams, starting with the LA Kings. I've got Quentin Byfield. The Kings are firmly in the what the hell are they category now. They're sort of in the in that mushy middle. They're a little bit better than that. They've got some nice pieces. I'm not really sold on their goaltending, which I'm sure one of you guys will go after. But a Quinn Byfield, it's it's put up or shut up time. You know, he it always takes power forwards a little bit longer to develop. And these COVID players did not have it easy. But I think he's gotta show something. I'm not saying he has to come out and be a superstar. He's, he's got to come out and show some semblance of I'm an NHL regular, I can handle big game minutes, and I and I can be a consistent point producer. The Kings, I'm really not sold on them. I'm going to put them as a rafter team. 
very gingerly because the West is so weak compared to the East. But I would not be surprised if they ended up as a Laugh or Drafter. They're a Rafter for me. Um, I had them going. I had them beating Edmonton in my bracket last year because I'm. I really like the forward group that they have, um, and even their defense. I don't. I don't totally hate the defensive group they have. Uh, but as far as goalies say, you said we were going to go after. Them. I <clears> cannot <throat> tell you who's a goaltender for LA. Oh, don't you? I worry. honestly, I'm getting can't. cooking. Pearson's not there. Quick's not there. <laughs> Like I, I can't. Phoenix Copley, I think he's a goalie. For yep, LA. yep, he is. <clears throat> There's trivia right there. Back there. there you go. That is ready to start <laughs> war. Yeah. So, oh yeah. We're cooking over so here. So I, yeah, I, I'm not gonna count him out. I think if, if the team gets going, comes together, and gels, I think they could be a rafter team. Chris, how dare you? How dare you? Oh, the the host, Chris. You're. I always say launch for you. Host. How dare you speak on the great name of 36 year old legend Cam Talbot over there in the LA Kings? All right, buddy. Come on, it's Cam Talbot. I had no idea he was there. I just found out today. <laughs> Is it like Talbot and Copley? Hang on. <laughs> It's David Ritchie, Copley, a 22-year-old, and Eric Portillo, and Phoenix Copley. Wait a second. Wait a second. They have Eric Portillo? That's yeah. That's another Michigan boy. He's a killer. I, I'd love to see him there. <laughs> Can I officially change my pick to Laffer? No. <laughs> I want to. Anyway, my my pick for this team. I have tears coming out of my eyes. This is really funny. My t- my pick for this team is none other than Pierre Luc Dubois. Show me something. You wanted this trade. You wanted to be out of those teams. Show me why you wanted to be out. Kind of the same thing with Goudreau. You know, he's like Chris. Uh, you went on the tangent earlier in the year saying, you know, he's played for this going to be his third team in two years or some like yeah. some stat like that. You know. I've defended him. I I said you know you were on two really really bad teams. Now granted, this team isn't any isn't light years ahead of those two teams, but I think they're in the right direction. You have I, personally, I think you have another good year in Kopitar left. I think you have another good year in Doughty left if they stay healthy. Dubois, don't waste it. Let me see what you have. I want to see it. Well said, well said. Yeah, also, time to go off, King. Also, um, other Chris. If there's a Chris getting yelled at on the show, it's always going to be me. You don't ever feel like it's going to be you. <laughs> yeah, you're That's cool, I've noticed you guys have started picking up just saying Lance, which <clears throat> still catches me off guard um, when I listen to the podcast because I'm only used to like teachers calling me Lance when they're mad at me. But it works. Should I just start calling you Lancey? <laughs> I'd, I'd rather well. I, I would that. rather. I'd lots. rather. I'd rather that than like just going. Hey, Christopher, because like that's when I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> you you should wrap them off. <laughs> All right. So next up we have Minnesota. Uh, so for Minnesota, for mine, I have a question for you guys. My X factor is the depth scoring because right now, can you tell me somebody who plays the Minnesota Wild forward group besides Kirill Kaprizov? Oh right, yeah. Scrolled, oh yeah. Down far enough. On their cap friendly to ruin it for me. Matt Boldy, baby. Uh, oh, okay. um, uh, Freddie, Freddie Goudreau. Only, right, only so know Boldy. that because I have his, I have his hockey cards. So we got Carol Kaprizov and Matt Boldy, and that's basically it because Freddie Goudreau does not move the needle. So my point is, the Wild need to play Yo, Pat, Pat Maroon. Maroon. Pat Maroon. You just asked for someone that played forward. Pat Maroon does not move the needle either. Dude, how many cups does he have? Come on now. All right, they're gonna need. They're going to need to maximize on their depth scoring. Yes, Freddie Gaudreau. Yes, Pat Maroon. And whoever else they have. Max Shaw. I Matt think. Zuccarello. Yeah, they have Zuccarello. Matt something Eric Rossi. Matt. Felino. Marco Rossi. I'd like to see. I don't know if Rossi's going to start in the NHL. That's the thing. But that, that's for right. a different episode. We'll see. Samuel anyway, Walker. Hansen, maybe. But you, you see my point. There's, these are all what ifs. We need these guys to be consistent top six, top niners. If they can get that, if these players can establish themselves as X, Y, and Z, then they'll have a way better chance of making the playoffs this season. Right now, Minnesota, I've got them as a laugher. I love what Bill Guerin's doing. They just don't have an identity yet. They're a laugher for the right reason that they're trying to get there. It's just going to take some time. But right now, they're sort of stuck in that mushy middle. 
I have him as a rafter just because, um, you know, we all kind of looked at Vegas last year and we're like, there's nothing spectacular there. Uh, and look what happened. Now, obviously, there are differences with uh, Vegas of last year and Minnesota of this year. One of which being that Mark Andre Fleury is 38 and will be. Uh, hang on, I'm trying to do math in my head. Will be 39 during the season. So, like that, that's going to be a big difference. Um, but. You know, uh, Philip Gustafson, I'm very bummed that he doesn't play for Pittsburgh anymore because he's been doing well. Um, but the rest of that team, that forward group congeals, that defense group tightens up. They can get into a uh, a late division spot, a wild card spot. And like I said earlier, 16 teams make it. Sometimes it's you. So um, my last note for them is... I really hope that at the end of this season, they, uh, Pittsburgh being they, comes in and picks up Marc Andre Fleury for a one day contract. Oh, you had to beat me to the punch, didn't you? So, my X Factor, Philip Gustafson, their goalkeeper, 25. Pretty cute guy. Um, <laughs> if he has a good year, I think this team's really good. More so, like, more so really good in the fact of they're going to be in that mushy middle where they can. Make the playoffs, or they can just fall up by like three points. That's what I can I kind of see with this Minnesota team. Outside of Kapriel Kaprizov and um, Boldy, nothing's really pushing the needle. You know, you could have another guy step up like Rossi, like Walker, Erickson Eck, but this team right now is in that mushy middle. And kind of the same thing what Lon says. I want Pittsburgh just to kind of go for flurry at the deadline if Minnesota's completely out of it. Why not add an experienced vet? Let him learn some more. Uh, let Jari learn some more from him. Let Nijelkovic learn some more from, like, learn from him. <clears throat> I think it's a win-win, honestly. If if Pittsburgh goes and gets Flurry back, I'm gonna say he's at three and a half million. Ask Minnesota to retain half of it. If you're not going anywhere and he's coming off the books at the end of the year, just ask him to retain half of it so they can fit him under and, you know, do one final push for Flurry. I respect it. That that's a good vibes move. You brought uh, Nick Benino in last year for vibes. This is a better vibes move. Well said, well said. And our last team for the day, Montreal. Montreal, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Their X factor is what they get at the trade deadline. The trade deadline pieces. I think Kent Hughes, is, Kent Hughes has done a tidy bit of work here. I really can't talk today. Um, I think he's done a great job here in the off season, getting a ton of assets. Um, and really getting prepared for this rebuild sort of thing that they're going through. If he can just maximize on what they have in their roster right now at the traded line, I think he'll be in a way better position. And um, I have them as a drafter, but that's exactly where they should be. They know what they are, and they know what they're about. So that's a great situation to be in. Um, Canada, if it helps you feel any better, this is not a laugher that I thought of the point and laugh at. <laughs> but uh no i i do put this team as a laugher because you made it into the uh what was that the 2021 uh stanley cup final uh at a sheer dumb luck like you, you really stumbled your way there um and since then it's just been it's not been good you know this has to be the year that you start showing you've been picking some stuff up in that time and one of those things my x factor that i've want to keep an eye on is uh wait where to go come back there you go <laughs> is <laughs> is uh harvey pinard uh because as i was looking over cap friendly i noticed that he is waivers exempt and is going to be an rfa in two seasons which to me says it's time to play for your spot if your waivers exempt and there are people that could outplay you you're quickly going down so get out there play for your spot help the team win yeah. So, what day is it today? August 14th. So, uh, Montreal fans, I want you to remember this date. Why is it significant? It's because the day Zach Benoit actually complimented your team. <laughs> listen. I you say officially in their war. Listen. I have bashed, and I mean bashed, 
Montreal for years. And it's been so much fun, but I need to respect what's been built with this team because it's honestly a very fun group of young players to watch. Nick Suzuki, Kirby Doc. Honestly, I'd even throw in um, Dvorak. I love watching him play. Leas Anderson, I believe, is who uh, somebody else they added. You look, you look, Cole Caulfield, Slavkovsky, then like Harbor Jack guy. So many names. There's one name where I, yeah, or I can't, I can't pronounce his last name, but Chris wanted him from me in fantasy. Arbor, can't pronounce. Yep, I can never pronounce his name. You know, yeah, you have to Smith. That's maybe the only downfall. But like, (laughs) so he could be third. Uh, yeah, exactly, and and you got Ryan ba- Ryan Bacher. like oh, oh man, this team, it it like scares me to say that I could genuinely see them making the playoffs. Like they like I can see them, the 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 kids could get hot and ride that wave and take them to the playoffs. I again, I think the goaltending is the biggest issue. What's up with Carey Price? Is he ever gonna touch the ice again? I think that's the number one concern. Monte Monte Boo is he good enough to be your number one, or is he good enough to tandem with Jake Allen? Is Jake Allen good enough to tandem with Monte Boo? That's kind of the biggest thing. The Smith is easily a third string in that that rotation there. That's not even a question. But I don't know something about this Montreal Canadiens team. I really like Nick Suzuki, like him, Caulfield, and Shvetsnik or uh, Slavkovsky. Oh my God, that line is so fast. It, it's well, a, that's another team it's like, I was talking fun about hockey. Chicago earlier like that's a team that if you want to get into hockey and you're up in Quebec there you go get into Start Montreal watching. like I, I'm never going to cheer for them don't get me wrong I'm never I'm not going to become a Montreal fan but like I got it like you got to tip your cap when you see it they've built a team that can like they're drafters no doubt about that but they could sneak into the playoffs. Like there's, they they are a team that could, you know, down the stretch, the dog days at the end of the season, they could go on a win streak and sneak into the playoffs easily. They did it what three years ago. And at least they know what they are. You know what I mean? Ex- exactly. They know yeah. they're drafters. They know that they're still in a rebuild phase. But that's not going to stop them. Hell, Nick Suzuki's going to demotivate them to just keep going. Like it's it. I don't know. I really like what they've built. I I genuinely have to tip my cap to that team to this team. Yeah, do you know Sean Monahan is on IR? I yeah, did not know. That's funny. <laughs> I did not know that. Back. But I, yeah, for, I forgot he was on that team. I forgot Brandon Gallagher was on this team, and Gallagher's only thirty-one. This team is like this team can make the playoffs. I've like I again mark this date down that the day Zach Benoit actually said something positive, August fourteenth. Like I got to tip my cap to the Montreal Canadiens. Like I just I do. Yeah, but no, you're right that. That goaltending group is probably the weakest. And, <laughs> yeah, DeSmith is easily third. Um, Allen he, he's is fourth. 33. If, if, if Price comes back, if Price oh, yeah, comes Price back, back this team is a playoff team. I have no doubts about it. If Price comes back no, and, play, and plays at least half. Yeah, if he comes back and plays uh, the last half of the season, or, hell, if he plays a full season. Again, don't know what he's what's going to happen with him. I hope he's okay. Like, honestly, like mental health is a very big thing. Anxiety is a very big thing. I hope he's okay. Injury wise, I think I believe he's all healed up. I think it's more so stuff to do men- mentally. I could be wrong in that. Don't quote me. I hope he's okay. If he comes back, I genuinely think this Montreal team team can make a Cinderella run. I'd all like right. to think if he comes back, it's a trio of Allen, Price, and Montembeau that are actually up at the NHL. Yep. And the Smith is your break glass in case of absolute emergency. He's he's on the he's on the not dressed We're- list. Would you say that you would break the glass just in Casey of emergency? Okay, uh, now we move on to trivia. Wait, <laughs> stay in Pennsylvania, right. Sayonara. So, <laughs> so I've got one <laughs> trivia question today just because we're going to run long and we've got another episode of this coming up next week. Uh, but so we're just going to play a real simple one. Let's play Yermer Yager Doku. So Yermer Yager has played for technically including the Hockey DB 15 teams, but he's actually played for 11 main teams can you guys name all 11 teams that you played for hey i got one professional teams or nhl teams uh so there are i'll give you a hint there are two international teams oh, not God. not like not like his nation where he's from two teams that are uh, across the water and then the rest are nhl teams 
Oh, Chris, do you expect me to know this? Yeah, I don't know about you, Zach. I'm not getting the two European teams. No, right. I'm I mean, not I know, getting I know the European teams. Get, owns, get the NHL teams, that's... hold on. Get the NHL teams. Okay. All right. I know one is the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah. Pittsburgh. He played for Washington, too, right? Washington. Oh, bud. There's, a, there's another Metro team that I'm forgetting. There are two metro teams. There's two metro did he, teams. That are did he play for? Did he play for Carolina when they were the Hartford Whalers? He did not. There are three metro teams. <laughs> New New Jersey. New Jersey is number three. Okay. There are two more metro teams. Oh, not metro, but uh, Boston. Boston is number four. Say there were two more met. Uh, uh shit. Oh. You got a 50-50 guess, basically. You're getting them. There's two and then two other ones. <laughs> uh, the two New York teams. He played for the Rangers and not played for the, for the Islanders. Mother. It's Fuck. five. Did he play on the other side of of um, Pe- Pennsylvania? He yeah, did. He, he played for Philly at six. Played for Philly. Oh. Hmm. You've got one, two, three more NHL teams and two international. Did he? NHL teams. I want to say he played for a team out west. He put there, there's two out west, one in the east. Atlanta. No. Okay. Hold on. I have I have the jersey in mind. Not the Canucks. Not Edmonton. There's Did he play for one, the Kings? Calgary. Calgary is seven. There's two more. These are both southern teams. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Chris, Arizona. Hit Lawrence. It's not Vegas. <laughs> no. no. Uh, yeah, that I. <laughs> if you're curious. If you're curious. Seattle. <laughs> if you're curious. Um. Um, Florida. Florida is number eight, and you have one more southern team. Okay. Oh fuck! No, not Min- not Minnesota. That's not southern. <laughs> I, it's got to uh, be either Dallas or Tampa. Dallas is number nine. Let's go. And for the international teams, oh, time he to played sh- for. Time to chew. Do you have any guesses you want to wager? If not, I'll just tell you. I have not a clue. I'm going to upset some people if I just start throwing darts at the wall. Right. Hold so on. I got the- I got to get. Hold on. Oh, okay. yeah. Go off. Yeah. Go off, yeah. Just like keep talking, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, I might. Yeah. Nobody say anything. I'll have. I will have uh, one little piece of trivia to see if either of you retained uh, a um, question so, from the so second like, round of yo, trivia. Did, did you know that he played for H.C. Bolzano? Yeah, you're looking at the same page. So he played for Avantgarde Oaks in the lockout, and yeah. he played for Cladno, which is the team that he owns. And bo- but, but there's a third one. Yeah, he played for Schalker as well. He played one game for both of them. No, that's – is that how you – I don't think that's how you pronounce this. Shocker, yeah. Shocker Sharks. No, I'm looking at a different one. Bolzano? No. Hmm. Man's been playing for like... <laughs> There's a team so. that Chris doesn't know! <laughs> he's only played for that. He's played for Kladno and Avantgarde Omsk. Klad... He played for Retiri Kladno. Yeah, Cladno. That's it's just okay. Cladno. Well, it oh, says okay. Retiri in it. Okay, you little, you little puta. <laughs> okay, I'm... just Cladno. Yeah, it's the team he owns. What's your trivia, Chris? Mine's real quick. Um, there have been eleven final picks of the NHL draft to make the NHL. How many of them have ever gone on to win a Stanley Cup? I can name you, but oh, hang on, I gotta get my, I gotta put my phone on the charger. Hang on, four. <laughs> Two percent. Hang on. <laughs> I am panicking. See, this right is now. where I would insert Spanish flea if I was allowed to. So, like, did my guess? Did my guess get any close at all? Uh, it's way over. Fuck. Okay, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's two. By the way, it's two. It, okay. Okay. Can, Can I tell you? you them? Well, Patrick Hornquist is one. All right, that was the only one that I knew of. So I'm interested to, see, to hear who number two is. I also know, I think, Pe- well, he didn't win, but Pecorino was also last overall pick, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, and no, I was looking at ones that, that won. I'd have to go back in and see if Pecca was give a, me the gi- Give me the, like, the rough decade they played in. Are they playing now? No, you, you got it. It was, it was Patrick Hornquist. Was he the only one that won? 
from what I saw, he was the only one of the eleven that ever made the NHL to actually win a Stanley Cup. Okay. And well, I thought of it. it. I thought of it because of the second round of the hockey game. Yeah. That was one of the questions. Was you know this 2005 last pick went on to win. Um. So it just kind of. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna take that as my end horn. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, we're gonna conclude the show there today. So next week we're gonna finish off the final 16 teams. My phone is not at full percent. Um. <laughs> So we're going to finish out the final 16 teams, and we've got another trivia round with a little bit more uh, pizzazz to it. And then coming up... Okay, sorry. I'm done. Can I get one more drum roll, please? Can I get a drum oh, roll, please? you want a drum roll? Oh, baby. Hold on. Oh, no, it's not a drum roll. Crashes. It's just ba dum Hold on. I can add a quack. That's... All right. So, um... With with the wonderful clock we just had, we have a trivia showdown coming up starting in week four. So Woo! hold on to your hats. It's going to be very fun. With that, that is it for today on Beacon. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Watch our videos so you can see our bright, shining faces. Give us a listen on Spotify. Make sure you follow us on all of our socials. They're posted on Beacon Pod tweets on X now. And with that, gentlemen, we'll see you next week. You, you, you. As they say on the internet, welcome. You, you, you. There it is. Yep, 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 yep,